I maintain absolutely that there is more than one way. Before I move on, though, oh, <laughs> what do you think of the, of the hearts? I've discovered gifts with transparent backgrounds and I absolutely love them. For those of you that have been following me, you'll know that I totally love sharing I heart and when I do that I say I heart you because that's one of the secrets of backpacking of travel whether you're solo or with another or a group you have to do it from the heart guys you have to not see others as less than you you have to be able to see their heart to know that we all bleed red and when you do that then some pretty amazing things are going to want to share three things around whether you are or are not safe and whether you should be traveling solo and if you do what you need to do <laughs> oh thank god with live streaming it's like people forgive you for doing dumb things like i just did yay desley thank you for showing me and uh, so i hope you saw the video and i hope you saw the important words that i put on the video here's the first thing if how safe do you feel in the environment in which you live now? Now, I'm not talking about your house, your home. I'm talking about the environment that you shop in, that you go for walks in, that you play in, that you work in. Whatever your environment is, how safe do you feel in that now? If you do not feel safe in the environment you're in now, then solo travel is not for you in my opinion and here's why when you live in an unsafe environment now mind you it might not be an unsafe environment but that's another whole live stream which <laughs> hopefully you can hear what i'm saying uh, if you live in an unsafe environment you adopt mannerisms that you probably are not aware of it's the way you walk it's the way it's your posture it's the way you hold yourself it's the way you talk it's the way you look at people now all of us do that from a safety point of view is that person a threat to me many people do it so quickly and make the assessment so quickly that it's hardly noted as a matter of fact it's not noticeable whereas those who are living in an unsafe environment they are making the assessment very, it takes them a while to work it out. It's very obvious that they feel unsafe. So if you feel that way and you're thinking of going overseas, then forget the solo travel because you will take that those unsafe mannerisms, behaviours with you. Now, look at me. I've been travelling for gee 365 days plus today that's how long ago i left australia little did i know that i'd be gone for this long but i have been and i don't look like i've been through a war do i i don't look like life's been tough it is true that backpacking solo has its trials and tribulations but doesn't life so alba is um, a young woman who, whom I've met on my travels, her and her husband, Mike. And she put a post on the scheduled post for this live stream today. And she said, well, actually, <laughs> solo travel isn't safe. Life isn't safe. You can get killed in your own bed. So if you have it in your heart, that you want to get out and see how other people live, see the world, then do it. Make the plans to step out and do it. So I paraphrased Alba there a little bit, but that's basically what she was saying. And that's what I'm saying as well. One day or day one of your life 
the way that you want to live your life, not your life dictated to you by others, by how others see that you must live your life. We're too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time to do what you want to do. None of us know how long we have on this mortal plane and no one knows what the next step is. Like I see death as a door. It's a door from here to there. There's just a bit of doubt and debate around what there actually is. Is. So that's the first point. If you don't feel safe in the environment that you're in now, then solo travel isn't for you. Point two, don't do dumb things. Now, I can say that quite strictly and sternly because I have done dumb things. I'm really, really lucky that the dumb things that I did turned out where I learned lessons not to do those dumb things again without any grave harm coming to me. Sure, I was uncomfortable sitting there thinking this was a dumb thing to do. <laughs> so what are some of the dumb things that <clears throat> you might do? Well, some of them you already know. Be very careful with those that you meet just the same as people that you meet when you're in your hometown and you go out to a cafe or have a drink at night or in the day somewhere. Be very, very careful with your drink. <laughs> there are so many people, whether it's in your hometown or whether it's when you're traveling, that need something that you have. And often it's either your possessions or it's your credit card or it's your money. Now, am I saying that? For you to be alarmed, no, just be alert. Don't do dumb things. And another way to look at doing dumb things is please, even though there are lots of beautiful winding alleyways in the gorgeous towns of Europe, not that they're all gorgeous towns, I have to hastily add, and they look gorgeous in the day. Oh, yes, flowers, tables and chairs. At night, when you're going home and you look down this dark alleyway, because it is dark now, and you think, oh, it's a shortcut, I'll go there. Don't. <laughs> Do not go down that dark alleyway. So, look, it's common sense things like that, but common sense is not so common. And I'm proof of the fact that common sense sometimes is not so common. So the first point is, if you feel unsafe in your current environment, solo travel is not for you. Now, the good thing about acknowledging that is, is recognizing what are my behaviors? What is it that I am doing that communicates to others that I do feel unsafe? And the second point is, don't do dumb things. Oh, I should be doing it like that. Don't do dumb things, guys. <laughs> and you know what those dumb things are. What's the third point? Well, the third point is, it it is not, oh, and by the way, I could talk all day on this, but let's not do that now. <laughs> the third point is, so you would need to look at your personal safety, which is way important, and you'd also need to look at the safety of your possession. So I want to make a third point about your personal safety and then a point about the three levels of security that I always implement when I travel, especially useful in this last 360, six days now that I have been traveling solo. Let's have a look at the first part of the third point, which is about your personal safety. What I have learned is you never, ever, ever accept time, spending time in a stranger's house unless you've at least had a video chat with them. Please do that. Do not just rely on the photos on the website. There was an instance reported recently where this couple 
loved the photos this was in australia they loved the photos of the of the house it was just so gorgeous and then they went there and the house wasn't gorgeous as a matter of fact it was filthy and it could, it was very very uncomfortable for them they had to do a bit of cleaning so that they could live at least in part of the house well i don't want that <laughs> and the other thing so the thing is you must 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 seriously look at doing a video chat you can do it on whatsapp you can do it on facebook through messenger you can get a free zoom account and you can do it that way so you have all of those options and you can probably do it on wechat i just don't do wechat so I, I'm pretty confident that they would have a video option as well. Now, when you're talking to the, your prospective hosts, you need to, after you've had a little bit of chit chat with them, you need to say, oh, show me your, your home, show me around. And, and they can show you the home. You can look at things, make up your own mind. Ask them to show you outside if it's not night time. It's pretty good to see the yards, trust me. And then you must do this. Ask them to show you, oh, and where's my bedroom? Can you show me? Now, if they don't want to do any of this, then you don't want to go and stay there. One young woman who did a volunteer gig in Albania, no, it was Croatia, sorry, in, in Croatia, she, I, I actually sent an email to her and said, oh, the review you've left is interesting. Is there something that I should know? And she shared with me that no harm came to her. However, it was awkward because she had to go through the host, who was a single male, the host's bedroom to get to her bedroom. And then she had to go back through the host's bedroom to get to the toilet. And look, nothing happened. However, she was uncomfortable <laughs> and quite frankly I didn't go to that volunteer gig because I would be uncomfortable with that as well because trust me I go I have to get up every single night and go to the loo at least once <laughs> so that's the thing about your personal safety please please do a video chat and if people are reluctant to do it I've only had one instance where my first volunteer gig sadly so i didn't have the experience i did a dumb thing they didn't want to do a video chat so i said oh okay and i've done a whole live stream around that but it was terrible i, I can't tell you how bad it was and at that time for a start i couldn't believe that people could live like that and i'm talking about people that you wouldn't expect that like people that are chefs a young american couple with a little baby boy they lived like uh, pigs lived better than what they lived and there was a time there now whether this is true or not it's really not important what is important is how you felt at the time that's what makes it valid there was a time there when i felt in fear for my safety and so that's part a of the third point personal safety and let's now have a look at part b which is safety of your possessions i have three levels of security on my travels i have a um do not forget what it's called just now but it's where you hold it where it's under your clothes and it, it's it's part of your body um not part of your body but very carried very close to your body no one zooming by on a scooter can just slice the shoulder bag off your shoulders and go away with your bag which has happened more than once no this is safe so this is my level one security and they're defined by things i must not lose because they are hard to replace so what are those things thank you for the thumbs up guys too what are those uh, that's it thank you olga <laughs> i had a blank thing there a money belt absolutely and look it is an unattractive look there's no doubt about that and there's no doubt that i've put on weight in this year how could that be that i've put on weight but i have and uh, a money belt doesn't help with the the uh, tire around the middle but it's more important for me to have my 
to feel secure. So in that money belt, thanks, Olga, in that money belt, I have, as I've said, those things that are not easy to replace. One is the passport, pretty obvious. Second one is my driver's license. And the third one is my credit card. And the fourth one is some money, just some money there. Now, here's an interesting thing about the driver's license. I've only driven once since I've been in this last year, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> but I will be driving more, and I've got my Australian driver's license, and I'll be fine with that. But here's an interesting extra little tip about taking your driver's license with you. Even if you don't intend to drive, because your driver's license has your signature and a photo ID. So if you do happen to lose your passport, the driver's license doesn't replace it, of course. However, at least it's a valid ID that will help a bit. But, more, but for me right now, more importantly is what I'm discovering in uh, the UK, unlike, and I remember I've been traveling for a year, over a year now, and in Europe, it was enough for me to tap and go, or did I put in my four pin number? Oh, crikey, I can't remember. But what's happening here is that they want me to sign when I use my credit card. So I almost had a stand up fight here in York with the woman in the shoe shop. And, uh, and she said, oh, um, you need to sign and let me have a look at your the signature on the back of your credit card. I said, what? I said, I don't have a signature on the back of my credit card. She said, you must do that. The bank says. And I said, no. I said, do you realize that if I'd have signed my credit card and lost it, that's not too hard to imagine that it could happen. All someone has to do here in the UK is look at the back of the credit card. Oh, look, there's her signature. And they can forge my signature so easily. I don't want to give my credit card the access to, for them to my credit card that easily. So no, I will not sign the back of my credit card. I have a driver's license that has a signature on it. And guess what? Photo ID as well. So you can check it is me, which you don't get when you're using a credit card. Just someone who's very, very clever at forging your signature. Now, interestingly, I had this discussion just yesterday at Sainsbury's and the woman behind the counter, they've got mature women, which is great on the checkouts there. And she went, oh, well, as long as you've got your driver's license. And the guy standing next to me went, oh, I never thought of that. Oh, that's true. He said, and anyone could forge my signature. Hmm. <laughs> so that's my first level of security. Now, the second level of security is in my backpack. In my backpack, I have my second credit card and some money. I also carry a trolley bag or drag along a trolley bag because I do need uh, that extra bit. It's not all going in my backpack. So I've got my, my trolley bag and in there, I just have some money. So they're my three levels of security. If you have another idea, if you say, you know what, Victoria, what I do is better than that, please share it with us because when we share the information to make us feel safer when we travel, perhaps more of us will do that. So there you have it. Thank you for joining me today. And look, um, because you might have missed my heart at the beginning, I'm just going to put my hearts again. Aren't they just so gorgeous? I just love my hearts. <laughs> and I'm just going to do this because I love this. I'm going to finish off with this video because I love the words that are on this video. And that's how I'll end my live stream today. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in the next live stream.